Hey YouTube, this is Jaden Storm coming at you from Team Shadow Strike, and in this video, it's going to be a new episode of Cards That Make My Dick Hurt. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. Lately, I've been just trying to share random rants with you guys, but mainly the things I've been trying to do mostly for the channel is deck profiles, updated deck profiles, and matches. So, I have a couple of episodes of Cards That Make My Dick Hurt for you, and in this video, we're going to be talking about something that... I think that makes um, an archetype that came out in set 10 finally top tier status, in my opinion. Please note, as I've mentioned many times, tier status in Vanguard is opinion. That means it is not set in stone. It is one person's thoughts. It's just their, their prediction and how they feel about the meta. You're... Your version of the meta might be different from mine. You might think this clan or archetype is already top tier status. And if you do think that, you have every right to think that. And I am not shunning you in any way for thinking that it is. It's just my personal opinion. And I think this card gives that archetype that we saw come in set 10 finally something that makes the deck <coughs> good. I have lost to this deck already, and I'm pretty sure you have too, you know, if you've played almost all the clans like I have, but I'm, but you can lose to anything, anytime in Vanguard. That's one of the things that makes this game so great. But losing to a deck and then losing to a great deck, there's difference, even though that any player can make any deck great. But as more and more stuff comes out, the clan, the archetype becomes better just based off the cards it has. That being said, also, Vanguard is very good about giving all clans good cards, but in my opinion, this card finally gives them top five deck status, because I consider the meta tier zero, there's about five top, five top five decks at any given point, and I share them with you as I think it's changed. So the one in this episode, I think this is card fight, this is cards that make my dick hurt 35, if I believe it or not. And the card that we're going to be talking about today is Broken Heart Jewel Knight Ashley Reverse. I would show you the artwork, but too much of a glare. If you want, you can just go straight to the card fight wiki, which I'm just reading to you right off right here. It is a Royal Paladin Grade 3, as we all know. It is the cross-ride version of Ashley. And I would hold up an Ashley, but I'm now, I'm now out of Ashleys. But I'm going to have more before set 14 comes out for trade. Um, so here's its abilities. Limit Break 4. Counter Blast 1 and choose one of your rear guards with Jewel Knight in its card name and lock it. Choose up to one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row and retire it. So it has a Blaster Blade effect. Search your deck for up to one card with Jewel Knight in its card name and call it to the rear guard. Shuffle your deck. This ability cannot be used for the rest of the turn. Its second ability is if you have a card named Pure Heart Jewel Knight Ashley in your soul, this unit receives plus 2,000 power. And as always with most cards, it is granted the Lord ability. So this card, in my opinion, finally gives Jewel Knights their the boss monster they need to be considered top five, and here's why. <clears throat> Salome is good, guys. I'm not denying that. Under Limit Break, Salome can swing for 12 and plus two, plus one critical. That's good. But it sits at 10k. 10k vanguards are very tricky to work with in the meta right now because the its attacks from vanguards in late game just get higher and higher and harder to guard if you do not have a perfect guard or quintet walls which i'll do a video discussing them because i did a video a while back talking about a new breed of perfect guard and i never followed that up but <clears throat> 10k vanguards simply just have a harder time nowadays in the meta surviving in the late game this card, however, gives the opponent control of the field. Pure, pure Heart Jonai Ashley, her limit break skill is a break ride, which is plus 10,000 to whatever Royal Paladin rides on top of her and gives her an additional plus one critical. Bro Broken Heart Jewel Knight Ashley, all you have to do is counter blast one and lock one of your Jewel Knights. You not only get a Blaster Blade Liberator Dark Blaster Blade Liberator Blaster Dark Revenger effect to pop one of your opponent's units in the front row, you can re you can superior call any Jewel Knight 
from your deck into your front row that your opponent might have picked off in the last turn. So this not only gives you the ability to damage your, po damage your opponent, it means you can be a little more lenient with letting your front row rear guards die because you can simply just call it out of the deck and you don't have to waste hand advantage. So, in the late game, you can pretty much have a little version of Sybil or um, Revenger Tart out of the deck. You can just pop your intercept, I call my 12k attacker. Pop your intercept, I call Miranda. You know, for Miranda is another card that comes out in set 14 for Jewel Knights that I think makes them better. To where if she, her attack hits, you get to give 3,000 power to another Jewel Knight, which is really good. So, so, so good, guys. This deck has the potential, finally, to be considered a top 5 deck with this version of Ashley. The ability to lock, just lock a unit pop something and call something out of the deck is retarded. Now, there are some um, of the reverse units I think that they're they have not they don't have a any cost and need one, and there are some that I feel that their cost is maybe a little too much. This is one I think that's not that's a little too light. This one probably should have been one of those counterblast one lock probably counter instead of counterblasting lock two units or maybe counter blast one lock two i dare say because this card is amazing guys this is what is going to make jewel knights great because the ability to pop and superior pop something on the opposing field and then call to your own at the cost of one counter blast and just locking one card which you're nine times out of ten just going to lock your vanguard booster is awesome so, there you have it, guys. Broken Heart Jewel Knight Ashley. In the comment section below, please feel free to share with me your thoughts on this card. I'd love to get your feedback. Do you agree with me? Do you think this gives Jewel Knight something to be considered a top five deck status? Keep in mind that there's a couple of decks in set, in set 13 that will still be able to be in the top five, even after set 14 release. And there's a lot of other things that come out in set 14 that are very good. Mainly the new Ezel, the new... Uh, Genesis stuff, all kinds of things. Um, Tempest Bolt. So there's a lot of things that could be really, really good coming in set 14. So guys, um, give me your opinion on Jewel Knight Ashley and feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Comrade, subscribe, thumbs up this video for me, guys, and I will see you later.